All right, so this is creating a function table. So we're going to do this. We're going to learn how to make a table uh, that represents a function. And then later on, we're going to learn how to graph that function. All right, so first off, uh, we have our, some vocabulary. So we have a domain. Uh, the domain of a function is a set of all possible input values that allow the function formula to work. This is also known as the x value or the independent variable. Uh, so it's very important. We're going to need to know all that stuff. So domain is also known as an x value, which is also known as an independent variable. So if you ever see anything, if you see the word domain, if you see the word the terms independent variable or x value, that's all talking about the same thing. All right. And then we also have the range. Uh, the range of a function is a set of all possible output values uh, depending on your input also known as the y value or the dependent variable. Sorry, also I forgot that domain was also the input. All right, now range. So range, you can be called the output, you can be called the y value, or we can be called the dependent variable. So that's all those. So domain is the input, range is the output, domain is the x value, range is the y, and domain is the independent variable, and range is the dependent variable. So, here's a rule. In order to be a function, every input can have only one unique output. So that means every time you put a number in, it can only give you one number out. So for example, if I have this, my input is one, I'm saying every time I put in one, I'm gonna get a one out. Every time I put in negative five, I'm gonna get a, one, a two out. So in this case, since one only has one output, and negative five only has one output, this is a function. Okay, now, if I was to say I had input and output and I had negative 1 and 2 and I had a 5, a 6 over here, and this went to the 6, and this went to the 5, but it also went to the 6, since 1 has only 1 and 2 has 2 outputs, that means this would not be a function. So again, an input can only have one output uh, in order to be a function. So let's take a look at some of these. Um, so we'll do this first one together, and then I want you to try these second two to see if you can get it. So you need to check, and every time you have an input, you need to see and make sure that it has only one output. So let's check this one. Negative two, one output. Five, one output, one, one output. So that would mean this is a function. All right, so go ahead and pause this and come back when you think you have it. All right, so let's take a look at this one. Um, so if I notice here, negative five goes to four, to nine, and negative eight. So that has more than one um, output. So this situation is not a function. And then down here, we have one goes to negative two, so that's only one. Two goes to zero, that's only one. Three to negative three, only one, and four to, negative, to five. So everything only goes to 1, so that is a function. All right. Also, we can figure out uh, the range or the domain given this situation. Now, we just said earlier that the domain was also the x values, so that means the range is the y values. So that means I want to know what the value of y is every time I put in a negative 2, a 0, a 1, and a 3. So I can just write that in. So I can try and figure out why. So 2 times negative 2 minus 5. I also want to know 2 times 0 minus 5. I also want to know 2 times 1 minus 5. And also 2 times 3 minus 5. All right, so 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 9. I'm sorry, 5 is negative 9. So that means my range. We always put these little squiggly braces around it. Uh, is negative 9, 2 times 0 is 0, minus 5, negative 5, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 5, is negative 3, and 2 times 3 is 6, minus 5 is 1. All right, so all, you, all we just did right here um, is we substituted in the x values or the domain and figured out what our output, um, our range would be our y value. 
All right. Now, we can also do something called a function table. And this is a function table. Now, a function table always has x column, a uh, equation column, and a y column. Now, today we're just going to learn about creating these function tables. Later we're going to put another column on here called the x comma y column, or the ordered pairs column. And we're going to use those to, in, to graph a point on a line and make a line from this equation. So you can choose whatever you want to go for your inputs. Remember that's your x or your domain. Uh, but I always like to choose numbers that are close to 0 uh, that are integers. So I like to start off with negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. So I cho those are just what I chose. Now, in this column, whatever I chose for my x, I'm going to substitute in. So this is going to be 5 times negative 2 plus 2. This is going to be 5 times negative 1 plus 2. 5 times 0 plus 2, and 5 times 1 plus 2. Alright, and then the y column was just this, and so that means the y column is this solved. So 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, plus 8, or plus 2 is negative 8. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, plus 2 is negative 3. 5 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7. All right, so there you go. Over here, again, I'm going to pick whatever I want. So this time I'm going to go negative 2 again, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Uh, so negative 3, negative 2, plus 7. Negative 3 times negative 1, plus 7. Negative 3 times 0, plus 7. And negative 3 times 1, plus 7. So solve this, I end up getting 13. Over here, I'm going to get 10. Over here, I'm going to get 7. And right here, I'll get 4. Alright, so again, all you're going to do is you pick whatever you want for your x, show your substitution, and then whatever the answer to that is, is your y column. Alright, so go ahead and give these two a try. Again, remember, choose whatever you want for the x column. I like to choose negative 2, negative 1, 0, and 1. Uh, but you can choose whatever you want. But that's what I'm going to use when we go over it. So go ahead and pause and then come on back when you're ready. All right, welcome back. So, like I said, I'm going to choose these as mine. Oops. All right, and then this column is for my substitution. I'm doing is just plugging in whatever I chose for x in to x from the equation and then your y column is just a solve. So negative 6 times negative 2 is 12 plus 9 is 17. Negative 6 times negative 1 is 6 plus 9 is 15. 6 times 0 is 0 uh, plus 9 is 9 and then negative 6 times 1 is negative 6 plus 9 is 3. All right, let's go back here and let's check this again real quick. Um, all right, so we said negative 6 times negative 2 is 12. 12 plus 9 is 21. So we should add 21 there. All right, so there you go. All right, so now over here we're going to go 2 times negative 2 minus 4. 2 times negative 1 minus 4. 2 times 0 minus 4. And 2 times 1 minus 4. All right, so it's going to be negative 4 minus 4, which is negative 8. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. And 2 minus 4 is negative 2. All right, so that's it. That's all. That's how you create a function table. All you got to do is look at your uh, equation they give you. Uh, create a table here. So your x column. So you choose whatever you want for these x's. Write down your formula. Substitute in uh, whatever you chose for x. And then your y is your answers. Alright, so hope that helped you out. Uh, if you have any questions, come on in and ask.